Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome back to my FIFA 20 Liverpool career mode. Now before we get into today's episode, I just want to say a huge big thank you for love and support on the channel and as always guys at the start of today's episode, we're quickly going to look at the games that lie ahead but trust me ladies and gentlemen, I don't need to see the games that lie ahead because it's been on my mind since the last time I uploaded the previous episode and that is because we have Real Madrid twice in today's episode and also the Gunners Arsenal in the Premier League. And the reason this episode has been on my mind so much is because it's been so difficult for me. Usually, there's three games. I have an idea of which two we're going to play and which one we're going to simulate. But in this episode, I'm still struggling as I've sat down to record right now because we know we have got Real Madrid in the semi-finals of the Champions League. Lots of you saying, Brad, just go for the Champions League. A lot of you saying, Brad, still focus on the Premier League. You've still got a shot. But in today's episode, we maybe have to sacrifice one of them because we could play the first leg against Real Madrid. We could then play Arsenal. Depending on what happens in the first leg against Real Madrid, would then all depend on what we do in the simulated game for the second leg. We could play both legs of the Real Madrid game and hope that we manage to buy ourselves a plate in the final and simulate the Arsenal game and just keep our fingers crossed that we also get the win. But it could go horribly wrong. We could play both legs against Real Madrid and lose and then also lose to Arsenal, mean, meaning we've thrown away the Champions League and probably thrown away the Premier League, which makes it very, very difficult to make a decision in today's episode. And what's really mad about today's episode is... The next one will feature Chelsea and Newcastle and potentially the final of the Champions League. Meaning this is the second to last episode of season one at Liverpool already, which is an absolute madness. But to kick off today's episode, as we always do, it's my favourite part of the videos. You guys definitely know it by now. And that is we switch over to read through the comment section. Now, the last episode you guys seen in the Liverpool career mode was called Naby Keita Worldy Goal. It was against PSG and he left the defenders for dead. A little step over into a roulette, past the defenders, one-on-one -on -one with a keeper, back of the net. It was an absolute stunner and you guys thought so as well. But as we scroll down to the comment section, first comment coming in from Gage Whittaker saying, keep up the amazing content. Also wanted to ask you your thoughts on Liverpool signing Minimino striker from Salzburg in real life. Well, I can confirm that today, Liverpool have just signed Mina Mo Mina Mino. I think that's how you pronounce it, Mina Mino. We've just signed him. It's been announced by Liverpool this morning that we've got him. We got him for £7.25 which was his release clause from RB Salzburg. So, I think personally, I did reply to this comment, I think he's going to be a great player. I think he ticks all the boxes of what Klopp wants. A player that is constantly going to run and fight for the team is constantly going to press, a lot of high pressing, because that's exactly what Klopp wants, and also a non-selfish player, someone that's going to track back, as well as get forwards, and look to get goals, get assists, and I think he's a perfect fit, and I think a pretty decent bargain, so I am very happy that Liverpool have signed him. Moving on to the next comment from Kuru the Creator, what a masterclass performance against PSG, yes it was, I fully agree, I think you should play both legs against Real Madrid, it's revenge time. Now, obviously, what he's meaning to this, to some of you guys that may well not know, is the last Champions League we won. The Champions League, before that, we were in the final against Real Madrid. It didn't help that we had carriers between the sticks, but we lost. And it, uh, it hit hard. The fans were gutted. The players were gutted. Jürgen Klopp was gutted. So, potentially now to get revenge and knock Real Madrid out of the Champions League in the semi-finals could be very tasty and it's a very good point so thank you very much for that comment Kuru the creator next one from Bandits saying how many seasons are you doing with this it's two right correct Bandits with the Liverpool career mode we're doing two seasons so one more after this and then with the Dortmund career mode we're also doing two seasons another comment coming in now from Ethan LFC what a video favourite video so far well it was a good it was a real good episode uh, we did absolutely smash it against their uh, against PSG, absolutely stunning, stunning game, and personally, yeah, I think it was probably one of the best episodes for me to actually record and play, so very happy that you agreed, Ethan, and final comment coming in from Hussein Bati, or Bahati, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, sorry, Hussein, or Hassan, however you pronounce your name, I do apologise, saying, don't simulate the Arsenal game, so we've got Kuru the Creator saying, play both legs against Real Madrid, and we've got Hassan saying, don't sim the Arsenal game, 
I'm stuck here, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of the comments now. I now have to make um, a massive decision. And I'm just not sure, still to this second, what I want to do. I'm thinking, do I simulate the first leg against Real Madrid because we're at home? And if we can kind of keep them at arm's length, or do I play it and try and beat them 3 or 4 nil, and not let them score? And then potentially be in a situation of they haven't scored any away goals. And if we go over to Spain to play Real Madrid, we could potentially score an away goal, giving us a much better chance of winning. But then it's Real Madrid. And do we want to be knocked out of the semi-finals when we are literally two games away in today's episode to bag on ourselves a place in the final of the Champions League? Let's get into the press conference and I'll have to think over the next minute what exactly we're going to do. Honestly, guys, I'm not even playing up to this. It's such a difficult one. If we lose to Arsenal, we've potentially thrown away the Premier League. If we lose one of the legs to Real Madrid and then we play the other leg, it's going to be difficult to potentially come back. It's a risk, whichever we do. But I am going to have to make a decision. But for now, let's attend the press conference, see what the media have to say, and I'm just going to have to bite the bullet with this one. Here we are. Welcome, everyone. Thanks very much. Let's start taking some questions, please. Do you reckon the location of the match would be an important factor into your team's performance? I think playing at home, yeah, the home fans will definitely get behind Liverpool. And I think it is a uh, exactly what I was going to say. It is a big boost. They're saying a morale boost. Yeah, I think uh, it is. it is a good uh, morale boost for the team, especially... If you've ever been to an Anfield game, the way the fans sing you'll never walk alone, it's unbelievable. Mr. Brad, in your opinion, is there a chance Real Madrid will win the match against your team? There's always a chance. Um, yeah, there's a possibility. I'm not going to cover it up. I'm not going to hide the fact that Real Madrid are a great team and there's, there's a, there is a chance that they could beat us and, uh, and do us over. Your team is basking in great form recently. Do you think you can continue to perform at this lightning pace? Um, yeah, I'm sure of it. I think we are playing some great football at the moment. I think we can continue to absolutely dominate. Unfortunately now, it means we're at the end of the press conference, up, meaning I need to come up with a decision. And if I'm honest, guys, I'm not ready to throw away the Premier League just yet. So I'm going to play the home... I'm going to simulate the home game against Real Madrid. I know a lot of you may be happy with that. You may not be happy with that. Simulate the home game against Real Madrid. Try and keep a clean sheet or score a couple of goals and hope they only score you know, one, maybe two at the max. And then we can play the Arsenal game and then when we travel over to Spain to face off against Real Madrid, we'll know exactly what we have to do. This could be a massive mistake, guys. It could cost us the Champions League and the Premier League. But as a manager, it's a decision I've got to make. One of you saying, play both legs against Real Madrid. One person saying, don't sim the Arsenal game. I don't want to give up on the Premier League. Maybe before I make this final decision, let me just look at the Premier League and see the, the state that it's in right now. So, Spurs still have a game in hand, potentially going to 80, putting them six points. we got three games to go. Oh, See, all they have to do is lose one game and we can catch them. And then it'll go down to goal difference, but they're absolutely killing us on goal difference. This, this is the difficult thing. I think if they were on 35 games and still on 77 points, it may be a little bit different, but that's not the case right now. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, I've changed my mind. We're going to play it. We're going to play the game against Real Madrid. I think we need to. I think looking at that now they can potentially go six points clear of us with three games to go. Six points would mean they need to lose two of their final three and we would need to win all of our three to beat them. The way Spurs are right now, I personally don't see it. So, Hassan, I can only apologise for not playing the Arsenal game. We are going to be simulating it, but I think this is massive for us. If we don't win the Premier League, but we win the Champions League and we're in a much better position to win the Champions League, if we win the Champions League, we'll focus on the Premier League for our second season and not too much on the Champions League. But right now, it's the semi-finals. Potentially at the end of today's episode, we will know if we're in a final or not of the Champions League. Whereas with the Premier League, we'll have only played one game and we still won't know what the outcome is going to be. Although, if we drop points to Arsenal, if we were to play them and lose and Spurs win their next two games, it's game over and Spurs will go on to be crowned Premier League winners. 
So I think this is definitely the right decision, in my opinion. I know a few of you were saying, do it, don't do it, but I think this is the best decision. Anyway, we're going with Sadio Mane out on the left wing, Bobby Firmino at striker, Salah out on the right wing, Gini Wijnaldum linking up with the captain, Jordan Henderson, in the central midfield roles. A little deeper, we've got Fabinho in the central defensive midfield, and then Robertson at Van Dijk, Gomez and Trent at the back, with Alisson between the sticks. Gomez coming in to partner up with Van Dijk, because unfortunately, Joe Matip is not fully fit, but I'm excited for this game. Real Madrid have come to Anfield. Can we kick off today's episode? with an absolutely unbelievable win. And bear in mind, guys, if we beat Real Madrid here, there's no reason why we may not win that simulated game against the Gunners Arsenal. Come on, lads, we've got this. Come on. The semi-finals, the nerves are setting in. The sweaty palms are setting in. Come on, Red men, we've got this. We've got this. We've got this. We've got this. We can do this. Modric, Eden Hazard down the left wing. Oh... What a beautiful stadium. EA got it spot on, the stadium. As what the actual stadium looks like. Absolutely stunning. Karim Benzema wearing the captain's armband for Real Madrid. Hazard and Bale out on the wings. Paul Pogba. Sipping on my tea. Paul Pogba, currently a United player, has been uh, photographed with Zidane on a beach in Spain. Ahead of his move to Real Madrid, I think. The ex-Chelsea man, Thibaut Courtois, between the sticks. And Karim Benzema wearing the captain's armband, leading Real Madrid out today. As we get this first half kicked off with Bobby Firmino. Let's get it on the way. And come on, Red man. A wide now to Robbo. Mane wanting to go on the inside. It's a beautiful ball in behind here for Mane. Here comes Mane. Bobby in the middle. Little dinky. Bobby Firmino, it's 1-0. Ha, ha, ha. It's won the last of three minutes. Revenge is sweet. What a run from Mane. Little Dinkin over Varane. Onto Bobby Firmino's head. Thibaut Courtois does get a hand to it, but only forces it into the roof of the net. It was a great on-target header. And Thibaut Courtois just helps it into the back of the net. We all won the up against Real Madrid at home after just four minutes. Only takes a couple of uh, passes for Real Madrid to turn up here and create something from nothing. Ball through there to Gareth Bale. Great save from Alisson. Safe. String a few passes together for Real Madrid. And they can easily get through on goal. It's a great shot there from Gareth Bale. Modric ball coming in. Robertson's going to flick it on to Casemiro. Who puts it into the side net. And luckily enough for us, through there to Bobby now. Bobby going to play that through if we can. Melito going to do very well to... Uh, Comfortably take that one out. Mane going to put a bit of pressure on there and come away with that ball. Here comes Sadio Mane now. Genie in the middle. Little dig in. Genie's there. It's 2 0. Come on. Come on. Wow. Do we maybe play the Arsenal game and simulate the second leg against Real Madrid? We're absolutely slaughtering them. Beautiful weighted ball in from Sadio Mane. Onto the head of Gino and Aldum. To head past him on Courtois. He leaps like a salmon out of fresh water. And puts it in the back of the net. It's 2-0. And I'm feeling very, very comfortable about this game. There's Henderson up to Mo Salah. Mo Salah now running. Let's go through there to Bobby. Bobby going to hold this up. Play through there to Henderson. Henderson looking and running at these Real Madrid defenders. Here comes Henderson over now to Bobby Firmino. Who misses and then puts it wide. With the deflection. Oh, Courtois taking it to the face. And then it bobbled off the knee of Bobby. And out for a goal kick. We were unlucky to not make it 3-0 there. Maybe it should have shot with Jordan Henderson. Henderson now going to lose the ball to Hazard. He's going to get a shot off Virgil van Dijk with a cracking block. Headed over now to Karim Benzema. Going to slide in with Gomez. And between Gomez and Allison there, that was cracking defending. I slid in with Gomez to try and get a block on it. He just misses it. But it forced him to go near post. And Allison pulls off an incredible save. There we go. Hazard's now coming in. Here's Pogba. Edge of the box to Mendy. Ball into Bale. Van Dijk's there. Get rid of it, Van Dijk. How did Van Dijk miss it? How did he miss the clearance? What was he kicked the floor? Back off the keeper, and now it's in the back of the net. Oh, Van Dijk, that's poor, man. 
That is really poor. Just clear the ball out. They've scored that away goal. That is an issue. And it's ran on half time as well. I'm pretty sure as we look at playing this ball round now, the referee, there we go, is going to blow for half time at Anfield. Silly mistake from Virgil van Dijk. He tried to clear the ball. He kicked the floor instead of the ball. And Bale's there to tap it home. Allison's pulled off some incredible saves so far. We probably should have went 3 0 up when I played the ball from Henderson to Bobby Firmino. He unfortunately missed. Stat wise, Real Madrid are killing us. Eight shots, six on target. We had four shots, four on target. When you look at the possession, we've had a lot less of the ball. You can see from the graph, they tend to be wanting to come down the left side with Eden Hazard, where Trent currently is. But Trent's doing a great job at the moment. We've had all of our shots put on target, so I'm quite happy with that. And realistically, I'm quite happy to jump back into the second half with exactly the same team. We need to find a third and then a fourth if we want to put this game to bed because Real Madrid are not going quietly here. Through there now to Trent. This is beautiful. A few people in the middle. Ball coming in. Looking for Genie. It's cleared away from Varane. Manny's going to chase this one down and go back to Fabinho. Fabinho over to Henderson. Through now to Bobby Firmino. He's still going to fight for it. Bobby eventually going to try and get a shot off. It's a comfortable save for Courtois. Mendy plays it to Hazard, back to Mendy, it's now going to go in, Gomez is all over that one, play it through the middle now to Genie, here we go, come on, we can do something from this, Genie going over now to Bobby, Bobby going out wide to Bruno Fernandes, Fernandes going to hold it back, play it into Bobby, here we go, here we go, surely, go on Manny, go on son, Manny round, come on Manny, put it home, Manny makes it 3-1 in the 89th, come on lads, beautiful bit of football here, great pass, into Manny, who just took it round Rafael Varane and buried it in the bottom left corner. Bruno Fernandes, the new man coming on from the bench, had a massive impact there and straight away helped us find that third important goal we definitely deserved. Keep the pressure on here, Modric now coming forward. Take the ball off them and it's pretty much game over. There we go, referee blows for full time. We've beaten Real Madrid at home 3 1. Real good result. I just wish I had made the decision that if they hadn't have scored we would have simulated the second leg they did score meaning we can't afford to because one away goal it means they need to score two and if they beat us 2-0 and we don't score an away goal they go through but a cracking result a cracking cracking result Allison pulled off some incredible saves stat wise we pulled it back a little bit. At half time, we were four shots, four on target. We managed another two shots with both of them being on target. Real Madrid still eight shots, six on target, so no shots in the second half. Considering at Liverpool, at Anfield, they had a lot more of the ball, which doesn't tend to happen. We still managed to beat them 3 1, only having 39% of the ball, so very impressed, impressed with how the lads played. Sergio Mane picks up man of the match with a 9.6 rating. And now we march on into the simulated game against Arsenal and look forward to the second leg when we travel to Spain to the Bernabeu to take on Real Madrid. But let's get into the post-match interview and see what the media have to say about that because that was pretty impressive. Here we go. Time for a quick question. Yep, fire away. Fire away. Liverpool won today at home by two goals. How do you rate your... Uh, how do you rate your chances? You mean how do you rate your chances of getting through? It's not over yet. We could have made things more clear. We need to say, yeah, it's not over yet. Yeah, I agree with exactly what we actually replied. We are in a great position. We're in pole position. We just beat them 3-1, but it means nothing. Uh, Genie's continuous hot run of form. Genie played very well. He got on the uh, score sheet as well. Deserves all the praise. But yeah, I mean, we've got to go to the, uh, the Bernabeu and take on Real Madrid away from home in today's episode. It's not going to be an easy one. A comfortable win after three goals scored by Liverpool. Do you think it could have went a different way? Not a chance. We were very comfortable. Uh, Scoreline was unfair to them. Time to focus on our next match. We could have scored more. No, just time to focus on the next match. Because up next, we are simulating the game against the Gunners Arsenal in the Premier League. If we draw or lose to Arsenal, ladies and gentlemen, bear in mind, I think the Premier League is gone. Well, I was hopeful that by the time we got to the Arsenal game, Spurs would have played their 35th game. And the reason for that is because if Spurs were to play their 35th game and lose and stay on 77, it means we'd only be three points behind them. Both us and Spurs played 35. Three points in it with three Premier League games 
to go till the end of the season. Nine points up for grabs. We would need to make sure that we got all nine points. And I think we've got Arsenal, Chelsea, maybe Newcastle for our last three games. But it put us in the mindset of there's still a chance here. We draw or lose to Arsenal and Spurs win their 35th game. And although realistically it won't be over the Premier League, for me it will be. Because Spurs are on such a hot run right now, it's going to be very difficult to catch them with only three games to go. Bear in mind, after we've played Arsenal, we've only got two games to go. So a win is a must, and we are travelling to London. It's an away game, and I don't really like simulating away games. I also don't like the fact, which you guys will see in the minute, we haven't got a super strong start in 11. Not the start in 11 I would like to play. The start in 11 we just put out against Real Madrid is my usual strong start in 11. We don't have that team fully fit. A few players are still in there, not 100%. But we've had to rotate a lot of the team, like Virgil van Dijk. Although he did make a mistake in the game against Real Madrid, he's still a top quality player that I want to have in my team. And unfortunately, if I play him against Arsenal, there's no way he could play against Real Madrid. And for me, like Kuru the Creator said, we're in the semi-finals of the Champions League. We beat Real Madrid in today's episode and we're through to the final, which will be played in the next episode, meaning we've got a chance to win the Champions League, just like Jürgen Klopp done in real life last season. Now, next season, we can focus on the Premier League and we could simulate most of the Champions League games if we're not too fussed. But to get the double would be absolutely incredible. But one thing I have learned is in the second season, if you guys want me to go after the Premier League and the Champions League, I would have to build the team. Realistic or non-realistic. We would need more quality players to have. So when I take someone like Virgil van Dijk out, we haven't got someone like... Dejan Lovren going in in his place like we have against Arsenal. I need someone quality to help us continue our winning ways. But we are now going to attend the press conference. I'll then show you guys the squad that we're putting out against Arsenal. And then we'll simulate the game and keep our fingers crossed that we do get that very important win. But first, let's see what the media have to say. Well, we'll thank you, thank you. Now. There I am. Let's fire through these. Question one. It's been a good season for your team. A win in your last match. We'll see you qualify for the Europa League. Europa League? Do you mean Champions League? Do you mean if we get this win, there's no way we can be knocked out of the top four? I mean, that's definitely wrong. Um, But okay. Is it meant to be European? Is it meant to just be like you're qualifying for European football? Not the Europa League? Um, My players want to win it now. Uh we'll bring European football to this club but yeah let's go for that let's go with that one you secured a clear victory in your previous match do you think it's going to affect Arsenal's morale um, yeah morale's a great aspect in strategy yeah we'll go with that last time the match ended in a while well, last time we played Arsenal it was 1-1 ok although it couldn't have been 1-1 because realistically all this is messed up anyway uh, we'll do our best that's what we'll say my headset also keeps going off saying battery low, so okay, I don't know if I'm maybe going to have to uh, take a little five, ten minute break after the Arsenal simulated game and charge the headset and then get ready for the Real Madrid game. But regardless, guys, before I even think about doing that, this is the lineup we are putting out against Arsenal. You can see Alisson, Joe Gomez, and Sadio Mane are not fully fit, and hopefully, our assistant coach in this simulated game. We'll take off those three players. Maybe not Allison so much, but if we can take Gomez and uh, Mane off, that'll be muchly and greatly appreciated. But we have gone with Sadio Mane out on the left wing. Divock Origi at striker, Shaqiri out on the right wing. Bruno Fernandes wearing the captain's armband in the midfield with Naby Keita. A little deeper, we've got Marco Grujic in the central defensive midfield. And then Max Lovren, Gomez and Klein at the back with Allison between the sticks. It's a simulated game against Arsenal. It's potentially going to give us the chance or give us the answer as to whether we've still got a chance of winning the Premier League let's get the lads warmed up we draw or lose and it's gone but if we win there is still hope wow we beat them 4-1 wow I didn't expect that in the 22nd minute Devok Origi opens the game with the first goal taking it 1-0 to Liverpool Sadio Mane then scores in the 37th goal making it 2-0 Pepe scores right before half time Going in then at half-time away from home to Arsenal 2-1 after Pepe scored. 
Straight away in the second half, we kick off and Divock Origi goes and scores in the 46th minute. So within a minute of kicking off, we've already put another in the back of the net, taking us to 3-1. There's a couple of changes. Van den Berg did come on for Gomez. Unfortunately, we didn't take Mane off. Kieran Sieni picked up a yellow card in the 64th. And then to box off and finish the game, Jadon Shakiri, Little Shaq, scored in the 68th minute to give us that very important win. We beat Arsenal 4-1. And although Hassan did say don't simulate the Arsenal game, we could potentially now be in the final of the Champions League and also still be in with a chance of winning the Premier League after we just simulated that game against the Gunners and we beat them 4-1. I couldn't have asked for anything more. And I think my choice now of playing the Real Madrid games is spot on. Because imagine we'd have simulated that first Real Madrid game and then played Arsenal. We could have drew or lost to Arsenal if they played it. So, so far, Real Madrid, tick. Arsenal, tick. Now, for the second leg. Let's do over Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. Let's bag ourselves a place in the final of the Champions League. And let's keep fighting for this Premier League title. It's showdown time. Liverpool versus Real Madrid. This time, we're away from home, travelling to the Bernabeu Stadium. We currently lead 3-1 from the first leg. Real Madrid have scored an away goal. So it's pretty important here that we score an away goal. So if we could get off to a great start in the first half, potentially score an early on goal, just like we did when we were at home. We scored after just three minutes in the first leg. If we could do the same away from home, I'm pretty sure this game is going to go exactly how I expect it to. I honestly think if by half time we can be beating them 2-0, or at least by two goals, so whether that's 3-1 or 4-2 or 2-0, as long as we've got a two-goal lead on them just from this leg, I think it's game over and we should finish off Real Madrid and get that juicy revenge by knocking them out of the semi-finals of the Champions League. But first, we'll attend the press conference, answer any questions the media have to ask. We'll then look over the team and then we'll get into this game against Real Madrid. Here we go. Questions, questions. Van Dijk is in good form. Will we see more of him today? Yes, we will. Uh, I'll just say switching tactics because there's not really an option to say yes. I wish there was an option to say yes. You're facing Real Madrid at home, having defeated them in the first leg away by two goals. Even though they've had some good shots, are your favourites to go through? Um, uh, we aim to win in front of our fans as well. We won in front of our fans, and now the travelling fans that have travelled over to Spain, we, uh, we're aiming to win in front of them as well. Mr. Brad, in your opinion, is there a chance Real Madrid will win the match against your team? There's always a chance. Uh, there is a possibility. Going to be a realist here. 3-1, there's no reason why Real Madrid couldn't score two or three goals against us. So, um, I'm going to be honest, questions done. I wish sometimes it was either four questions or two questions or a little bit more because it's always just three questions and they're always very, very similar questions. Well, let's get into this game now against Real Madrid. Now, we'll line up. I've sort of got my potential starting 11 out there. I've brought most of the players back in, as you can see. But unfortunately, Sadio Mane out of the left wing. We played him against Arsenal. He's not back fully fit. So David Neres, the man we brought in from Ajax at the start of the season, is now playing in that left wing position. I said the start of the season. I think we actually brought him in in January. But apart from that, no changes to our current starting 11. Alisson van Dijk, Trent, not 100% fit. Alisson is a little bit of a worry well, hopefully we can do a job at the Santiago Bernabeu and we can get that very important win. But we have gone with David Nenes out on the left wing, Bobby Firmino, a striker sell out on the right wing. Gino Rijnaldum linking up with the captain, Jordan Henderson, in the central midfield. Rolls a little deeper. We've got Fabinho in the central defensive midfield and then Robertson and Van Dijk, Matip and Trent at the back with Alisson between the sticks. Let's get into this game against Real Madrid. They're at home now with the Spanish fans behind them. It's not going to be an easy game. But I think one or two goals to us in that first half. And it's game over for Real Madrid. Come on, Red Men. We've done it at home. We can do it away from home. Anytime Real Madrid want to come knocking on our door, we'll keep that door closed. And if they do manage to open it, we'll make sure we slam it straight in their face. Meaning if they do manage to score any in front of the home fans, we will look to destroy them. But let's get this first half kicked off. It is Real Madrid kicking us off, kicking from left to right. Come on, Red Men, we've got this. David Neres going to go out wide now to Robertson. Not going to get that final ball through, unfortunately. Robert going to take it back and play it round now to Neres. Go on the inside to Gini. Gini through a goal! It's 
pretty important here that we score an away goal. So if we could get off to a great start in the first half, potentially score an early on goal, just like we did when we were at home. We scored after just three minutes. I'm shocked because I literally just said, you guys will have heard it. If we can get off to a great start like we did when we were at home scoring after just three minutes, we've just scored after four. Genie Wijnaldum is an absolute beast for us in today's episode. An absolute masterclass from him as he puts it between the legs of Thibaut Courtois. Casemiro, Casemiro pushing really far up the pitch. And there's a great ball through there to Pogba. Matip going to get a great block on a great save there from Allison. Benzema is going to get the equaliser. I mean, great block there from Matip. Great save then from Allison. And Pogba three times came away from that, but come away with that ball. That's frustrating. Benzema side foot. I don't know why Van Dijk didn't slide or move towards that ball a little bit more. Frustrating, frustrating, but I'm still feeling confident. Ball into Miro Van Dijk. Gonna watch that one nicely done, Henderson. Straight up now to David Neres. He's now going to run at these Real Madrid defenders. Look at Neres go. He's absolutely flying. David Neres. Go on, son. He's done it. It's 2 1. This Liverpool team is the dream team that Klopp has always wanted. The counter attack on football from one end of the pitch to the other. David Neres was gone. Absolutely gone. He stayed calm. He stayed collected. And he's buried it in the back of the net. It's 2-1, just in this leg. 5-2 over the two legs. Come on, Bobby, win that header and flick it on if you can. Rafael Varane coming for that one. Pogba gonna play it back to either Melito and the referee is gonna blow for half time here at the bear the bow. And we currently have the lead in this leg 2-1 and 5-2 over the two legs. Both teams having three shots, three on target. So both teams being very consistent right now. We are having a lot more possession than we did in the first leg when we were at home. So I'm comfortable with the fact we've come away to the Santiago Bernabeu. We're having a lot more of the ball. We're staying clinical. We're putting the ball on the back of the net. Hopefully we can see the same from the lads in the second half as Bobby Firmino does get us kicked off. Come on, lads. This is ours for the taking here. Fabinho out wide now to Robertson. He's going to take a heavy touch and look at moving on. Let's go inside now to Neres. Neres keep going here into Bobby. Back to Neres. Beautiful bit of football here. Here's Neres. If he can cut it back, give it to Bobby on a plate. Game over, Real Madrid. Game over. Up the Reds. I'm, I'm bringing the kids on now. I'm bringing the kids on now. I'm going to give players that need a well-deserved rest. Kuba making his way into the box. Virgil van Dijk all over that one. Here's Robertson now. Who's going to push on? Now let's go, Kent, because I'll have you in behind there, son. And here goes Kent. I tell you what, I may have Neres towards the back post here. Nice ball in, looking for Neres towards the back post. Is Mendy going to get there? He does. Let's keep the pressure on now. Casemiro pushing down this left side. No idea by Casemiro. The CDM is on this side. Ball in, and Kubo gets ahead to it. It's offside, though. It's offside. We take this ball off and they fall so many men forwards. We may be able to get a counter-attack going here. And if Rian Brewster wants to run for me, We'll certainly find the right ball for him. Ball through there now to Isco. Isco's still going to be onside. Ball in now. It's a great goal from Kubo. He does get his goal. But it's a late one. It's not going to be enough to pull them back in this game. We've only three minutes added on. We're, uh, we're not playing great football anymore. But I think it's because the game's gone on so long. And as Adria Zola runs the ball out towards the far side. We've bagged ourselves a place in the final of the Champions League. Wow. Who is going to be our finalist? I'm not even sure who the other two semi finals were. I have a funny feeling it's Barcelona and. I'm, I'm not sure who the other team is. I'm pretty sure Barcelona were the other finalists. I'm not too sure who the other finalist is, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna find out right after the post-match interview, if not before. But Real Madrid have six shots, five on target. We had four shots, four on target. Very consistent with our shooting, 100% shot accuracy again against Real Madrid. 
A little bit less possession, but a little bit more than the first half, or the first leg, should I say, so I'm very happy with that. David Neres manages to bag himself man of the match with a 9.1 rating, and we do beat Real Madrid 3-2 in the second leg, 6-3 over the two legs. Here we are. Van Dijk is continuous. Van Dijk was alright. Van Dijk was good. I feel like he is having a little bit of a, a dodgy patch at the moment, though. Some of his passing, some of his tackling. It's uh, a little bit iffy. Well done on your massive double victory, taking you into the competition final. What are your thoughts? I'm over the moon. This is where we prove that we are. The credit all goes to the lads. We have an, uh, Yeah, all the credit goes to the lads. The performance from them is, is absolutely incredible. Uh, where you were all concerned about the result when Real Madrid scored in the last minute of the match? No, because it was already 6-3. I had no concern. Yeah, it was a late goal. Yes, Kubo got his goal, but, you know, we were really in control of that game and, and we played our absolute heart out. And we've now arrived at the first game in the next episode and that is at Anfield against Chelsea FC. Now, Spurs were on 34 games played, 77 points. They're now on 35 games played, 80 points, which means they did win their 35th game. This is going down to the last game of the season, I kid you not. The next episode will include, as far as I know, or as far as I am aware, the last two games of the season and the final, which is going to be against Barcelona. I didn't know that. I've just seen it on the 30th of May. So we have Chelsea for the first game at home. We then play Newcastle away from home. And then we take on FC Barcelona in the final of the Champions League. It's a no-brainer as to which games we will be playing. Of course, Barcelona and Chelsea will be the actual games we play. Newcastle will be the simulated game. I swear to God, if we lose or draw that game to Newcastle away from home, the simulated one, I'll be absolutely devastated. But the good thing is we play Chelsea. We then have a full six days off. We then play Newcastle. And we've then got a full pretty much two weeks off till we play Barcelona. So plenty of time for the players to get back. And we've knocked one of the Spanish giants out of the competition today. Now we've got to go on and beat the other to win the Champions League trophy, which is absolutely insane. What's even more shocking is I've still got the last episode's comments up. The last episode was episode 20, meaning this episode is 21, meaning the next episode after that, 22, the next one, it, uh, it's the end of season one, which is... An absolute madness. I still think we're in for a great chance here yet of winning the Premier League. I know that sounds shocking, but Chelsea and Newcastle, we've done the hard work. The next game, Spurs play, is against Leicester at home. They then take on Arsenal at home in the London derby. And then Crystal Palace away from home for the last game of the season. With two games to go, there's only three points in it. Okay, if Spurs win their next game, there's six points in it. It still could go down to the last game of the season. And then it could go down to goal difference. We need Spurs to drop points either in their next game or their two after that. I'm just trying to work out in my head. So we're three points now, potentially going to be six. So if they drew their next game, we'd only be four points behind. If they lose their next game, we still stay three points behind. So we need them to drop points either against Crystal Palace for the last game of the season or against Arsenal for the second last game of the season. We also really need them to lose against Leicester. Leicester are down in 15th position, doing really, really bad. Crystal Palace down in 18th. It's only probably Arsenal that can probably do something about it. And they're down in 4th position, currently 9 points behind them. It's a difficult one. It is a difficult one. But I'm still going to keep faith. What do you guys think? Do you think there's still a chance that we could be lifting the Premier League title? in the next episode and also the Champions League title or do you think we're only going to get the Champions League title and we're going to struggle because of the run that Spurs have had early on to catch them right now I'm not too sure but I think I mean even when you look at that Harry Kane 25 goals his top goal scorer he's 6 ahead of Bernardo Silva 6 ahead of Marcus Rashford 10 ahead of Aubameyang 10 ahead of Chris Ward 10 ahead of Haller I mean Harry Kane has absolutely smashed it for them and no wonder they're so high up and uh, absolutely cruising it right now. But it's football and anything can happen. And the next episode, well, it's the end of season one. And it will be a very big and exciting and interesting one to see whether we have a chance of winning the Premier League. 
and also the Champions League. But that is going to do it for today's episode, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to drop your comments down below if you're new around here. Click that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. And I've been Massive Brad. Peace out.